today's video, I really want to talk about the flow. So okay. I want this to be the master class on flow. <laughs> you have tons of different aquariums and they all kind of utilize a similar pattern, but I think there are some differences. Mm -hmm. um, and what I think is also really awesome is that you have an Acroporo tank, you have an LPS tank, and they require a different type of flow. Yes. Let's w walk around the store and take a look at each individual tank and talk about your systems. So we've got three large tanks and then a whole bunch of smaller tanks. So um, I guess let's start with the one closer to us. Um, so Dimo, maybe you can uh, tell us first of all what you keep in this aquarium. So this tank is normally for like our assorted frags mm -hmm. and generally any type of brain coral, scullies, uh, well, so is trachees, acanthophilia, cyanarinas, they all go on this large portion of sand bed. We're very low right now, but that's normally where they all go. So it's kind of tricky to get the flow right in this tank, specifically because of like trachees and well so's. They don't really like a lot of flow, but we also need to get flow to all of these frags all the way down almost six feet over. Mm -hmm. um, so in this tank specifically, there's three MP40s. Um, so actually, there's four. Okay, so we've got two, two on, on the, this the one end. Yes. And this is doing a lot of the flow, which is ending up towards the frags on that end. Yes. Um, so it's kind of strange how I've managed to get so much flow being pushed from side to side, but not really disturbing what's on the sand. Yes. Um, and I'm pretty sure one of them are on pulse and the other is on reef pressed. Yes. So I really played around with them to try and, you know, kind of figure it out. And then on the back end, next to each overflow, it's hard to see them because they're tucked in the back. Uh, there's also an MP40 on each side. Mm -hmm. They're tuned a lot lower um, because so right in here. So these two kind of nukes, uh, and you have them all the way down, right? I mean, yeah, so they're really low. So they're yeah. I think they're at like ten or twenty percent just to get some movement underneath the rack and on that side. And it, it's been working very well. Um, I think it's just enough to kind of move things around in this tank. Why uh, do you not run them at uh, a higher than, let's say, what you said, 20, 10, 20 percent? Uh, two reasons. One, I find that the sand goes flying. Mm, okay. And if I have them any higher, the water starts to fly out of the tank. Yep. Um, and then also, when I have a lot of stuff in stock, like you can see on this side, I have lots of toadstools on this end. Okay. So if I have too much flow, uh, it'll just blow the toadstools completely over. On the other end, I try to do more ghanis and stuff like that, which they can't handle too much direct flow. Ah, okay. So because of the LPS, they don't want to be blasted. And this is a good idea to um, just gently push the flow here, but then uh, the two MP40s over here will do the main work, Yeah. right? And you have a frag section, which by the way, I want to comment, this is an awesome uh, revolutionary frag rack, uh, revolution design from Treasure Corals. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Uh, you like it so far? Yes, very easy to work with, uh, very clean looking. It's very efficient in the space. All right, well, folks, you can get it at treasurecorals.com. Uh, shameless plug, but shameless uh, plug. <laughs> uh, going back, uh, I just want to say that even this tank is what, six feet? Uh, uh, it's six foot by 30 by 16 tall. So two MP40s in one side will give very good flow all the way through and I think it's the most efficient way to set it up on a yep. rectangular tank, right? Yeah. Two and two I find. I've done every configuration you can think of over the last almost two years and I find that this works the best for me. Very nice. Well, um, so this is predominantly LPS and some frags. Um, fairly low, lower reach to medium light system, correct? Yep. It's, it's a little bit on the lower side, especially because we run two pros on this, so there's a lot less blue. Yes. Um, so it is a lower light system. I think it's a really good idea to demonstrate the flow by throwing some fish food, and then we can actually see how it goes. So we've got some Meister shrimp, and I think uh, the MP40s, they, what, slow down and sl ramp up again as well? Yeah, right? they change throughout the day. It's on reef crest, so sometimes they're a lot stronger. Right now, it looks like they're a little bit slower than normal. Mm -hmm. But even then, we can see that uh, they slowly go all the way across. And maybe some of it will be picked up, but you can actually see right here the MP40s on the back, hitting it all the way back. And you've got this circular motion on both sides. That actually does make a lot of sense. Um, one little note, based on your design, I've actually modified my treasure farm system to pretty much do exactly the same flow. And I've been running it for maybe the last two months. And uh, it's working well? It's working very well. And this was actually the idea for me shooting this particular video because 
we did discuss a lot of this before and um, it's been working really well in my farm. All right, so we've got tank number one. Let's take a look at 1.5. Yeah, actually, uh, this is a new addition. I haven't actually seen it before. So uh, maybe a little side note, what uh, was the rationale behind this aquarium? So we're running out of space when we got our orders in. Now we're doing such large orders that I needed more space. So I thought, you know, what can I do aside from getting a bigger store? <laughs> and uh, I figured out a way to kind of fit three of these smaller tanks in. And they together they kind of equate to almost one entire big table. This is beautiful. So I get a lot of space in there. We're still in the process of finishing them. So they're, they're a little bit rough uh, as mm -hmm. far as the wood and stuff like that. But they're functioning. Um, and on top of having more space, it's also really helped uh, with the system turnover because I designed the three main tables with very low turnover. And now because I have th this middle tank will feed this new tank and this mm -hmm. new tank will drain into the tank on the right. So it really stirs all the system together a little bit better. Well, this is beautiful and those uh, torches look so delicious. Um, <laughs> I may have to pick something up for my uh, display. So, um, you have only a gyre in here, right? Yeah, so, so this tank was is just a gyre. Uh, the plan was two, but it looks like I'm not really getting much detritus build up, just yeah. the one. So I think I'm going to stick to just one. They're small tanks, it's, it's really hard to, uh, to figure out what you want to do to get flow in there without there being too much. And then I don't want to have two pumps if they're just going to be on 10 or 15%, it doesn't really make sense. Um, one thing I want to point out about Demo's uh, stores is that all of the aquariums are immaculate when it comes to detritus. There's not a lot of it uh, underneath. You can even keep the sand bed, but everything is clean. And I think one of the reasons, obviously, other than you uh, putting elbow grease, um, is the fact that you uh, set up the flow, which is not only good for corals, but it's also good for a functioning clean system. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really do much um, cleaning. I might, I might do a gravel, like a detritus vacuum once a month or two. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple little collection spots that we've figured out by changing where the flow is. Uh, and then in the tank with the sand every six to eight weeks when we do a big water change, we'll do a nice gravel vacuum. But it's generally pretty clean. I never really clean the racks ever. I think I've only done them once in, in over a year and a half. The fish keep them very clean. All the microfauna bacteria keeps everything Beautiful. very clean. Okay, so now we've got the second tank, and in this tank, it's a little bit different. You've set it up a little bit different, so I want to talk about this uh, next. Uh, but first, what do we have in this tank? I can see Euphelia. So it's kind of like a mixed colony tank. Uh, most of the time it ends up being Euphelia, and mm -hmm. then a lot of Ghanis, uh, based on what comes in on our order. So it's uh, half of the tank is very high flow. It's kind of weird, but it is a bare bottom, so we do need to keep a lot of flow going underneath. Um, yeah, generally it's colonies, we try and organize things, but when we end up with large orders, things just kind of get mixed in here, so we just have a whole bunch of stuff. Wow. Um, so to the right side we have a lot more flow, or your mm -hmm. left. Um, one MP40 is on pulse on 100% up top, and one on the bottom I believe is on pulse, again, about 100%. And there is only one other MP40 on the other end. I did want to keep it like this corner, a little bit lower flow for the times we have corals that can't handle it, mm -hmm. or if we have corals that are stressed, um, mm. just to kind of keep them there. I always try to keep also like a basket to put stuff either that's sold or um, anemones and stuff like that. And then it gives us a little spot underneath for stressed out corals that need shade. We'll put them in there and that's a very low flow corner. So that's one of our detritus corners. Mm -hmm. It really likes to collect there so it's easy to clean up. So you want to throw some food in yeah. this one? Let's take a look at There's the There's not too many fish in here right now, so I won't put too much food, but... Uh, nice. So, oh yeah, yeah, you can see the difference right here. So folks, uh, here we see a little bit of a stronger flow and that's why it kind of uh, juts all the way over there. But other than that, we would uh, expect a similar pattern to what we've seen in the previous tank. Um, I want to ask you, so you have mentioned Pulse, um, and since we're talking Ecotech right now, so there is Pulse, there is Reef Crest, there is uh, Constant Flows. What is your thought on the different modes and where would you, what's reasoning behind applying one over another and what circumstances? Um, I find the two main ones, the most popular ones are going to be the main, like the regular Pulse, which is their blue, um, and Reef Crest. I find Reef Crest to be like the most balanced, most kind of natural to mimic um, where most of these corals come from, where you have 
some slower tides coming in and then you have a lot of flow coming in sometimes. Um, the only thing I don't really like about reef crest too much is it is more constant. There is really no pulsing to it, mm -hmm. which is why I do some reef crest, some pulsing. So I do have random flow in the tank because no coral likes to be blasted from one side. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody loves the pulse because you get that swaying motion, the back and forth. And they have a few other, they have a lagoon mode, so very, very slow flow. Um, they have a nutrient export mode, which is kind of weird, um, but it's designed to stir up detritus and Do force it up. Do you use it? I used to use it at home with my personal tank, but um, I find it's too aggressive sometimes, especially in a retail environment where I have a ton of coral. It doesn't really work for what I need, but I've seen a lot of people use it in their, in their systems as well. At the end of the day, as long as you have random flow and it's not too strong, um, I think either of the modes will work well for you. I see. So, uh, but for example, if somebody's setting up uh, their tank at home, which would you recommend to start with as kind of... I'd probably recommend Reef Crest. It's probably the easiest, um, especially with someone who's newer. Yep. If, you do, um, if you do the pulse, sometimes what happens is you actually get like quite a big wave in the tank mm. and it starts to affect your overflow, the way it drains. Some people don't know how to handle it, how to tune the overflow properly. So I find less troubles in general when you just stick to Reef Crest. Nice. Oh, and I another shameless plug. I see a beautiful tweezers over there. Oh, yes. So. We use these for grabbing all our corals so we don't have to get our hands wet. Phenomenal. Available at treasurecorals.com. And, and they float. float. That's it. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the tank I'm most interested in, oh, uh, yes. which is the Acro uh, tank right over here. Tank number three. Yes. So this is absolute chaos when yes. the flow is on, so it's a little noisy, so sorry if you guys can hear it. They're a little bit older MP40s, so they're a bit noisy. But I'll turn the flow on now. I'm gonna admire that uh, school of blue uh, <laughs> tank, the hippos, uh, which are uh, adorable. All right, let's look at the flow first. Um, look at how strong the flow is. We'll throw a little bit of food in here and then we'll turn it off and talk about the rationale behind this. But look at that, folks. That is wild. So it's a lot stronger. So notice how long it took for the food to go from one side to another in other tanks. And here it just blasts. Um, and obviously since this is acros, they love um, this strong, strong flow. Also, let's look at the bottom. Yeah, I think in the, on this tank, you can really see this beautiful pattern where uh, things get in from the top in the middle, jot all the way across, and then they come back by the MP40s below, and you've got that circular, beautiful gyre pattern. Yeah, we managed to get it with an entire rack there too, so it's across the top and across the bottom at the same Very time. Very efficient. Wow, I actually didn't notice that. So yeah, you're not losing any space. No, no. there's just this one corner right here. If you come along, it's, this is our detritus spot. And I don't know where the detritus comes from. So <laughs> sometimes I'll suck this out a couple times a week uh, and it finds its way into this corner. You know, Which is good. Yeah, so we get to collect it. Um, sometimes one of the big fish goes by and makes a giant mess. So it turns into a little bit of a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. um, what I did before was I had one of these two MP40s on the left side, mm -hmm. on the bottom pointing this way and there was almost no detritus anywhere, but the problem was it would be sus suspended for most of the day. So I let it settle, which I think is a little bit easier to deal with and uh, it's cleaner. Very nice. Uh, okay, let's turn off the flow and actually, oh yeah, it's a little quieter now. So, um, so two MP40s uh, on this side, so it's very similar to the tank number one and you've got, I assume, two MP40s uh, below. Yes, and this tank also has a Reefway 45 on the overflow box. I want to. So I knew that was going to be an issue with acros. This area wasn't going to have a ton of flow yes. because the MP40s are on the sides. So yes. I put in a Reefway 45 and I noticed a massive difference because I used to get to try this collecting in the acros over here. Mm. So this helps a lot. Um, it really helps push a lot of water. And I find it kind of stops right here. That's where the MP40s and the gyre just hit and they go back down and then these two MP40s bring them this way. So it's it's really like chaotic in this tank when the flow's on. So was it on when we were right now doing the, um, uh, the test? Or, yep. uh, yeah, so it was. Interesting, so, but even then you could see some food still kind of carrying over to this side and then going to the both sides. Yeah, it's not the strongest pump, yeah. but it's more um, widespread flow. It's yes. like a sheet of flow. Yes, very nice. It works um, pretty well. And. I just want to take a side note and just commend you on some very nice acros 
especially over yeah, I have here. Yeah, a couple uh, show stoppers over here. So, um, for people watching, um, where can they find your site? Um, uh, so our website is reefparadise.ca. We don't have everything on there because we try to focus a lot more on the customers in store. I mean, the storefront is the most important thing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's always been my thing. I didn't want to go crazy with the online, so I try to I try to provide you know a decent variety of stuff to customers online. Um, you'll find a lot more acros on the website than anything else because we grow a lot of them. So I always have you know our collection there, but there's always goodies that that we have in store that you'll just never see online. I like how uh, on TV you're, sh you're showing Anthes, and then you have Anthes inspiration. <laughs> that's the idea behind right, it. Right, right here. This we're, is you know we're a smaller store, so. I can only help so many people at once. It's something to keep people busy, to look around. But it also shows you, you know, where our fish and where our corals come from. Yes, and uh, I'm sure we're gonna do a, another couple of tours. I want to do another video just to talk about fish. So right now this is just a preliminary view. But um, we keep talking shop and we keep talking like more professional setup. Um, I'm really curious, you've got a few tanks here uh, in the store that show you what's available for a hobbyist so we've got oh i just got a this is a beautiful picture just i'm, con I'm considering making this the screenshot for today's uh, video although this has nothing to do with flow this is just That's gorgeous um, yeah so as i was saying you've got two tanks that we can draw an inspiration from. So I want to first start with like uh, this little nano right over here, which is tiny. Probably flow is not super important here because you've got uh, low light and low flow coral yeah, in here. It's extremely low flow with that tank. Sorry, there's no power head, only the just stock pump. Just the return, yeah, whatever comes out of that. But yet, you can see that everything is moving. So. I think something like this would make for a perfect um, on the desk aquarium, uh, if you look at it. So everything is moving, you've got uh, two clowns in here, and I like how it's even floating and you're not scared that this thing is going to no, break. It's, it's been designed to float, we had to just extend the stand edge there yeah. for us. But. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, but speaking of strong flow, this aquarium here thanks, uh, is chock full of acros oh my god that is oh <laughs> this is stunning i remember when you just opened up and uh, yeah let's let's throw some food in there um, and <laughs> it was uh pretty bare bones and there was not as much stuff i recognize that green slimer um <laughs> and some of you re can may remember it was in my tank a few a, a year ago yep. but Look at all the acros, they've all grown attached to the rock and there's just such a variety. This is like being in a uh, chocolate factory <laughs> over there. Holy well, Yeah, I get, a, I get a little uh, carried away sometimes, but this display is a representation of what I love. It, it's mainly acros. I have some euphelia and stuff like that in there for, for movement, but I've always been an acro guy and this is always what I've wanted in display. Yes. So. Uh, I wish it was bigger, as you can tell, I try and fit something <laughs> absolutely everywhere, even mounting acro colonies to the back glass on the sand bed in the back corner. But um, it's really coming together. Just, uh, I think it's about a year now. I think it's about a year old. Yes. Maybe 13 months. Yes, and um, I just want to point out that you've got the Walt Disney's of the world and all the other named corals in here. And every like everyone is exhibiting beautiful top-notch coloration. Just look at that. Um, pink caddy. Uh, you, you see a lot of different pink caddies, but this is the OG with uh, just the right color. And it actually spent, I want to say, the last six months being stung by torches. Oh my <laughs> and god. And he's still happy. Yes. So, okay, so in here we've seen the flow because you just fed him, but can you talk us through the flow now? So this tank has two MP40s as well. As mm -hmm. you can tell, I love, and yeah. I love Vortec pumps. Go Ecotech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think they're just the most effective, most efficient pumps. Um, you know, they're expensive, but 
you get what you pay for. So there's two of them in here. They're not on 100%, only because the euphelia on the sand cannot handle it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could crank it up, but I originally started this tank with them both on the back. Mm -hmm. And then I found when the acro started growing more and more and more, they just couldn't, they couldn't get enough flow in the centers. Mm. So I moved them to the sides uh, and they're both on reef crest mm -hmm. just to kind of give the fish, um, you know, higher flow, lower flow. Because if I make this tank too crazy, I think the fish are kind of going to get stressed out. And when you say they are on reef crest, uh, are they synced or are they completely independent? They're independent, so they do their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, again, more random flow. I find that's better. And I think they're at like maybe 50 or 60%. Um, at the end of the day, it's a 65 gallon tank, so you yes. can only go so much. That is gorgeous. Um, so, and th that's it? It's just two MP40s? That's that it. The return is doing almost nothing, as you can see from yeah. the top. It's just it's kind just of squirting sprinkling. some water. Yeah. I'm a big believer in lower turnover, so the filter has more time, like skimmer has more time to really pull more protein out of whatever mm. water's in the sump. Uh, whatever filtration you have there is being more efficient. Um, it's just not needed. As long as you can keep temperature, Yep. You're good. Hear that, folks. Um, you don't need to be doing 300, uh, like t three times turnover per hour or no, whatever. It, it used to be common to say five to ten times turnover, but now it's like two, two yeah. to three. It's all you really need. Oh, wow. So, But I'm really impressed because to many hobbies, I think this would be the pinnacle of what people would want to keep at home. You've got Acropore. It's a pure mixed reef with uh, the torches, with uh, Euphelia. Uh, like the frog spawn, octa spawn, and yet, uh, and even some some gonies, and yet everything is uh, looking spectacular with just two uh, MP40s, and the flow is strong. Um, there's not a single spot that I see that's kind of dead. Um, yeah, I find even the back corners. I used to have like mushrooms in here. They would never settle. They would just keep spinning in the back corners. I'm also uh, surprised that the green slimer is kind of almost getting hit directly no um, yeah it, it's growing into it like yes that was we trimmed it down pretty <laughs> pretty heavily it used to be in the center yes um but my my whole plan for this tank was always to have two staghorns yep different colors kind of mirroring each other mm -hmm. uh, but i could never find a big enough like blue or purple stag uh, so i had the green slimer in the middle for the longest time and then we ended up cutting a lot of it down selling a lot of it and i found a nice teal staghorn that would do the trick so mm -hmm. the green slimer is growing i'd say like 50% faster than it, even though the teal is still growing very quickly. Yeah. Um, but it's growing into the flow. I guess it loves it. And it's thick. Yes, um, very thick branch. It's a lot thicker than I had it with my tank, and I think that's because of the flow. Yep. So there you go, folks. This is another uh, secret. And um, Dimo, I really appreciate uh, showing us around. I think a lot of um, people that have been in the hobby, but also uh, newcomers would benefit greatly from all the years of uh, wisdom of you doing all of this, but also I think the results show. It's one thing when people say and you don't see their tanks, but here clearly they do. Yeah, I, I tell people, you know, what I do and there's nothing to hide. So we show them and we want everyone's tank to look like this at the end of the day. That's the goal. We want everyone to be happy. Uh, we're appreciating to the choir. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot. Dimo, thanks a lot for showing us around. I think this was very educational. And with that said, if you have any comments, uh, please write them below and I'll make sure that uh, Dimo uh, will answer them. See you in 2023. See you guys.